You're listening to This Week in Property. Stay current, relevant and up to date in the world of property investment. Learn from the UK's leading property professionals and grow your property business. Hello and welcome to today's episode of This Week in Property. In today's show, we're going to be tackling the subject of due diligence. Now, to get stuck into that topic, let's find out who our guests are today. We have Sean McIntyre. Hello. We have Alex Summers. Hello there. And we have the lovely Jane Buck. Oh, hi there. Hello there. Now, I had this power team in not that long ago, actually, on another show, which might kind of cross over into this one, because uh, that one, we were becoming goldmine area experts. And a big part of that puzzle, of course, is doing your numbers and what have you. And if uh, due diligence is about anything, it's about doing the numbers. Sean, the hardest thing about due diligence is saying it properly, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it most certainly is. Yeah. So many yeah. times you trip over that one. <laughs> I love when you're presenting it to the, the protege members and through the academy due, due diligence, diligence. Yes. Yeah. it took me months to get that <laughs> <laughs> so what on earth is it to explain to a novice the trying to jump into this world of property and we want to teach them this subject what is it we're going to be teaching them you know in general at a high level it's just it's research it's information right. gallon okay the more information you can get about a property about an area about a deal the safer you're going to be. That's what right. it is. You're trying so to minimise this. It's mitigating this. risks yeah. and stuff, is it? Yeah. Right, okay. And what kind of risks? I mean, what's the problem? Can we not just go and buy a place and, you know, make money off it? And, you know... You could. Uh-huh. <laughs> if you get lucky. Uh-huh. Um, so it's going to be luck if you do it that way. Yeah, definitely. Right. Definitely. Okay. Um, the biggest mistake I see people make, or two biggest mistakes I see people make, uh-huh. is underestimating how much the refurb's going to cost. Right, if okay. it needs a refurb, so in terms of the money they're going to have to invest, uh-huh. can quickly spiral out of control. Right. If they've not done the correct research first, the correct due diligence at that point, but also when it comes to getting that new value in the property, if you're wanting to sell it or you're going to rent it out, if you're refinancing it, whatever you're doing with that, if you don't get the value that you think you're going to get, uh-huh. then you can end up not making any money. Right, gotcha. Or losing money. Or lose what I even oh, worse, yeah. even worse. And Jane, is that the kind of starting point for you? This this end value, this final figure, is that where you are starting when you're doing your numbers, or are you doing it differently? How are you finding the kind of first step of right properties come up, or Alex has brought something in through some kind of person he's met at networking and stuff. Mm-hmm. Where do we start? What's the first numbers to crunch? Yeah, so so that's absolutely right. So is you it? probably are starting with a view to right. Okay, this is. You're starting off with something where you think, right, okay, there is a potential to add value here. Right. Either you're getting, either it's not needing a lot of work and you're getting it for a really big, you know, for a, for a decent discount, or you're getting it at discount, but you're going to be able to add even more value by doing a refurb and right. increasing the value and, and selling it for a higher price or remortgaging it and, and pulling money out of it. Right. Um, but that's where... Yeah, it's kind of, I'm visualising the spreadsheet that I plug all my numbers in, <laughs> and, and I'm, I, I basically I, I put in a kind of holding purchase price, so right. even so just off the top of my head thinking, right, what's the current home report value, what do I roughly think, roughly think the refurb might be, what mm. do I roughly think the end value is going to be, I'll plug in my purchase, my estimated purchase price at the start, right. and then I'll go and I'll work my way back, so I'll start doing all my due diligence on each of those different elements. Right. Um, so I'll look at the end value, I'll do my comparables, uh-huh. um, I will cost up the refurb, um, estimated, and um, put all that together with all of the other costs that I think if you've not been taught how to do it properly, ah. you forget about. Right. Because I speak to a lot of people who want to be involved in property and want to do, want to sort of invest uh-huh. and have maybe already done that, right. but they haven't taken into account all of the other costs that are involved. Uh-huh. So it's not just your refurb cost, it's not just what you can get for, for an end value, but don't forget if it's your second home, you're going to have second home tax to take mm-hmm. into account. Brilliant. If you're going to be buying with a mortgage, you're potentially more than likely going to have to hold on to the property if you're doing a buying flip for about six to nine months, for example. Uh-huh. You're going to have the costs that are associated so with that. You're going yeah. to have your mortgage payments. Uh-huh. You're going to have council tax potentially. 
um, you're going to have uh, factors fees, insurances, those sort of things. Yeah. And, and that's where getting some education really adds value yeah. or using somebody who's been educated really adds value because they can make sure you're taking all of those things into account. And let's not forget legal fees, estate agency fees <laughs> for when it comes to reselling. All so there's a lot fees. of things to think yeah. about. Um, and it is so, so important to do the correct due diligence and to take into account all your numbers uh -huh. and to, to get them to get them right. Not just to to make sure that to make sure that you're not underestimating, uh -huh. but also to make sure you're not overestimating as well. That was a that was a mistake I oh, made. Right, that's yeah. as well, really. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. In what way then? How's that kind of catching you? Well, or could it catch you? If you're not experienced and if you don't have a power team, uh -huh. um, you're going to be paying for you know for your builders for your estate agents for your legal fees all these sort of things you're going to be paying what the man in the street's paying and right. you're not the man in the street you're, you're a property the investor street. and that's yes. your business uh -huh. so you know what what you need to be doing is negotiating really good prices for all right. of those things so that you can sort of make sometimes, the most of every deal yeah sometimes that'll be the difference between a property being a deal and not being a deal mm -hmm. right. if you're if if your builder's quoting you, you know, seventeen thousand for a refurb, and you know you could, if you were in the game, you could get it for twelve, then you've got you got a hefty That's bit a of a difference there. Yeah, you know? definitely. And likewise with your solicitors and stuff as well, all your legal fees and all those things. If you've got these people on your power team, uh -huh. you build relationships up with them, then you're going to get better fees. You're going to get better prices than what most people would. Mm -hmm. So it's important as you say to not overestimate. Right, nice one. And Alex, with these numbers. Have you had to walk away from deals? Have you had to force yourself to walk away from deals? Is it hard? You know, when you look at the cold light of day, but you've been in seen a place, oh, I really want this, I really want this. Absolutely. Is Absolutely. that a tough thing? Yeah. I think, um, you know, um, with Jean plugging the numbers in and, and you know, basically saying it's not a deal, then I go, oh, wait, wait a minute. I'm sure, we could, <laughs> I'm sure we could maybe make this work. And that's happened. that has happened in quite a few occasions, I think. Has where, it? Where I, but you've got to, you've got to set yourself your own criteria and you know the criteria of how much profit are we actually are we prepared to make and if it goes under that are we going to walk away and they, yeah I mean a lot of the times we do we ha you have to walk away because if you don't then like Sean was saying you know they are these the the doing your refurb and all that kind of stuff it can all amount up yeah and, uh, and you don't really want to start cutting the corners and all that and to make a deal fit sure you know, you've, got to to force to, it. Uh, you've got to stick to your numbers and and. Uh, the deal works then, the deal works, but if it doesn't then, um, yeah, you need to be prepared to just walk away from it. Right, so you've got to cut that emotion out. It's all right. And, yeah. I, and I don't, I, I try and, I'm not going to try and pronounce due diligence. <laughs> 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 I'll call it a DD or, or, or uh, do my homework. <laughs> I've even easier. given up saying the due, I just say <laughs> do <laughs> diligence like an American or something. <laughs> so I get around it. <laughs> so Sean, you teach uh, the, the kind of protege people when we're doing the, the academy and stuff. How detailed are you going with them? So when we say the throwaway line reefer, how much are you drilling down within that? Are you trying to get these guys to go to the nth degree on things? Are you Well Or are you just saying, listen, Mr Builder, give me a number? Is it that way or is it no no? Well, you need to understand that roughly the rewiring will be such and such. Or you know, how detailed do you it's, go? It's going to be rough. It's going to be estimated at the start. Right. You you can't get away from that because unless you are a tradesman yourself and you know that that's the prices you can get for it, uh -huh. you're still going. Okay, I think my builder's going to cost this amount for that job. But when you're sitting your builder, you want to go through everything. You want to make sure that everything's been spoke about because right. they, they'll pick up things that you've missed yeah because that's going to help because they're the expert in yeah. that they're the expert in the building game so when you've got your rough costs you're going to go to the builder and so how much is the kitchen how much is the bathroom how much is this going to cost what about new doors what about getting the skirting or you, you want chrome handles on the doors right okay well that's going to cost it all these wee bits if you're not careful Mm -hmm. they'll amount up and before you know it you're, you're over budget right. so you want to sit with your builder and say this is what we want uh -huh. and you want everything written out and everything priced now if you are just as Jane says the man in the street and you're getting a quote from a, a builder for your own property uh -huh. they're not going to break the quote down for you no you're just right. getting a headline figure yeah they're going right. to, they'll, they'll give you a scope of works in terms of here's everything that we're going to do uh -huh. and here's the total amount 
Right. When you're a property investor, you want that broken down. Right. Okay. And they'll they'll be open to doing that because you're in a relationship with them now. You're going to be working with them. You're giving them more properties. Sure. To work on, and the benefit of getting that price from them is you get better at pricing up jobs yourself as well. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to pull them into the game all the time. You can just you're, you're pretty much want to be there or thereabouts with them. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you want as much detail as you can when it comes to the scope of works that's to get carried out. Uh huh. Because if you if you don't, then there's going to be hidden costs in there. There's going to be things that if it knocks over budget, uh-huh. then now you're not making the profit that you thought you were going to be making, and yeah, you, you need to be careful with that stuff. Right. I think what Sean's saying there is really like, having that relationship with the with the builder uh, is essential. You know because like recently as well, we we've sat down with another builder. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, so he's he's got in house tradesman and he's got other guys that he brings in from outside oh, right. so even just getting you know roughly what their day rates are with the you know, in square meterage of of if, if it's going to be all the you know plastering or redecoration or whatever it is getting that detail Sean was talking about there um, uh, sitting down and have, taking the time with your builder to get the detail of maybe square meterage if you if you really want to you know mm-hmm. nail down at a, a Closer price uh-huh. to to what it could be, or could, what the refurb could be. Then, um, I think spending time in the builder and getting these these prices for day rates and square meterage and mm-hmm. you know specifics, right, so okay. that um, you, you're you're closer to the actual figure. For I mean, obviously, I think getting that perfect is going to be virtually impossible. Of course, but, Aye. but just we're not going to get it down to the penny every time, aren't we? Not no. no. The, the better uh-huh. you the better you get at being able to price up a job for yourself. Yeah the more efficient you become when you're out looking at properties. Yeah. Gotcha. Because gotcha. you're not then getting your builder in to look at five properties that were, were never going to work. Yeah. Because you don't know the figures. Yeah. But you can go in and you could pretty much, you can tell straight away if you walk into a property, you go, right, this is how much, we're, this is the ballpark figure here. Uh-huh. And then I'm going to go away, do my proper due diligence, give that information to the expert, the builder, let them do their due diligence and go back and say, well, you might need a full rewire in there, you might need this, you might need that. Yeah. What about that damp patch there? Are you going to have to get that looked at? There's, there's different things you need to be aware of when it comes to doing your due diligence. Mm-hmm. Now, I'll play dumb here. Are we always going to have a builder in every potential opportunity? Or is there sometimes it's just that, you know, the place getting smartened up, for example, and we just need to know the numbers there? And if we do have those examples, what kind of number? What numbers do we need to know? What due diligence do we need to cover? So if you're walking into a property that's, that doesn't need uh, renovation done? Just, you've just had a great deal, you know, yeah. through... Alex was on the show not that long ago actually talking about um, being a gold mine area expert and doing marketing, and he might have a deal that's you know, not meant to any state agent. And it's just, you know, maybe it's been a tired property, you know, someone's passed away a long time ago and the, the carpets just need done or the mm-hmm. lick of paint needs done. You know, what kind of level of detail are you needing for, for that? What boxes are you ticking? Is it floor coverings? Yeah, so again, you can be you can be tapping into your builder. Maybe they've got the contacts. If you've got certain contacts for carpet fitters or for a painter and decorator or whatever, then you can just pull those individual guys in. You can just go direct yeah, and do one on one, right? But you're still doing the numbers. Is you're that still the lesson? Yeah, you're, you're right. still, you always need to do the numbers. You right. always need to do the numbers. And you might get, sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll get a deal that doesn't require any work at all Anything you at walk all. in and you're thinking there is there is absolutely nothing wrong with this property whatsoever right. well that's where the due diligence then comes out with the property and you need to start looking at the area yep. ah are you okay so, okay. It's, so what is the end value what is the rental demand uh-huh. Which is, is this property is it in a good area that's going to sell so there's mm-hmm. there's more due diligence out with the property than there is just with inside the bricks itself uh-huh. yeah. Yeah, I think I think uh, back to you like to the, the relationship with the builder you know mm-hmm. um Having a builder, okay, you've got it's got to be done, but you should probably have more than one builder. Mm-hmm. And and if you've got a big refurb, you want to really be giving your your builders the full refurbs. You don't really want to be personally. You don't really want to, the builders going in and just you know sort of like a paint job. I I can't. Want to be building up relationships with maybe um, painters and decorators, maybe just a plaster for those little single single right. jobs. If it is a, a property that's just needing a wee bit of touch up, uh-huh. maybe just needing the floorings, or just like you know the, the individual. The the reasoning, uh, the what do you call it, the 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 jobs that are small. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. We don't just really, take them off, get them done. Yeah, there's no point in it, having <coughs> your builder going in and messing about with these. We want to be using the builder for the bigger stuff, uh-huh. for the all round stuff. That you just hand them the keys and walk away and let them deal with it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the smaller stuff. I mean, just using 
yeah. you know, the, the single trades. That just comes that, back that to having a really good network as well, yeah, isn't absolutely, it? Um, absolutely. And that's one thing that's been really great for us is, is building up that network of all different builders, trades, and right. everyone else uh-huh. that, that you, um, all the other sort of support team that you need uh-huh. to, to be able to be successful in, in property. Mm-hmm. But going back to what you were saying, Sean, about the, the due diligence, not just on the property itself, but on the local area and all the rest of it, that you're absolutely right how important that is. And then um, that uh, one of the things that I've been quite surprised about over the, over the time that I've been involved in property is um, that you can't always rely on a home report value. Right. So you can't always take it as read. So if a home report value um, is say seventy five thousand for a property, mm-hmm. it doesn't unfortunately mean you're going to get seventy five thousand pounds. Sure. Um, what it means is that that's what a surveyor's valued it at, mm-hmm. but it's really only worth what somebody's willing to pay for it, and exactly. that's based on so many different factors. Yeah. And it's one of the kind of sad things that. I've found where you, you think oh, I'm getting a really good deal here because it's <laughs> X amount under the home report value uh-huh. but you have to ask yourself why has it been stuck on the market for so long Yeah. Um, why is it not selling when it's got that home report value uh-huh. so then, then you need to be looking so much more closely at what are the comparable sales in the area what are things really selling for Yeah. Um, you know how long has it been on the market and all that sort of stuff so uh-huh. Um, yeah, so so it's really really important to do your own due diligence, mm-hmm. and and also, um, with the greatest respect to state agents and stuff, when they say, oh, one up the stairs went for this amount, or one round the corner went for that amount, it doesn't really matter unless you can actually have that evidence for yourself, unless you can see it on the right move or the Zoopla sold prices, right. because if you're doing package deals and you're putting forward a deal to an investor, it's not enough for you to say the estate agent said yes you've actually got to give them comparable evidence on your sort of on your proposal mm-hmm. showing them that properties are selling for that level mm-hmm. and not just the estate agent said it would sell for that amount yeah that that's an excellent sense? point yeah I like and, that and more than one comparable oh absolutely you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I you've got to have a few get deals that come to me yeah. sometimes where you've got you know six properties that all sold at 85,000 and you've got one that sold 110 right okay and they're telling you this deal's going to be worth 110 because <laughs> that one round the corner sold at that you're going wait a minute here there's uh-huh. there's obviously an explanation for that right that big difference. and one wee street of a difference can mean that difference oh definitely yeah. definitely um in fact a, a recent one that we had where you're talking about 200 yards of a difference as, Seriously? as, soon, as soon as you go past uh, a certain point in that street uh-huh the, the value drops by ten thousand pounds. Oh wow. And, and unless you are an expert in your Goldman area, uh-huh. unless you're doing your proper due diligence, you won't know that. Yeah. And that's that's where the danger comes. Right. So you buy a property that's making you fifteen thousand pound profit and then you you'd go and carry out all the refurb, you do all the work to it, and then when you go to sell it, it's that's only going to make you five thousand pound profit. Yeah. And you think, well I've just spent yeah, all that yeah. time and all that effort and tied up all that cash for five grand. Uh-huh. That's, so, that's, that's a sore lesson. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. No, and, and listeners should definitely skip back to some of our episodes because the guys were talking about that, being that expert, learning to become that expert. Now, Jane, you mentioned a mortgage a wee while back. Uh, let's tie into the kind of financing and understanding the numbers there. For the novice, when he's trying to stack up his or her numbers, when it comes to getting a mortgage and stuff like that, maybe we're having to use it. What kind of things do we need to know and need to prepare for? You spoke about we could maybe have mortgage payments we would have to pay for, like, did you yeah. say six, nine months did you pull in there? Yeah, Yeah. so um, it's not always the case. Mm-hmm. There are some cases where there will be lenders who are prepared to lend on a property that's been owned for less than six months. Right. But there is a, a kind of six-month rule that's to do with mortgage uh, anti, anti-mortgage anti fraud um, legislation mm-hmm. where... Um, you might find it difficult to find a buyer, if you're doing a buy and flip, you might find it difficult to find a buyer who can get a mortgage on a property that you've had for you've held for less than six months. Right. The difference is if you've bought in cash, mm-hmm. then that doesn't really come into it. Sure. Um, but yeah, that's something that you need to bear in mind that you will have the costs. Right, of, um, so we've got over that to you. Yeah. And, and then, are you looking at things like interest rates and stuff as well? Are you, are you jacking these into your spreadsheets? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So 
I, I can't remember the exact figures off the top oh, of my head because <laughs> because because yeah. uh, following your lead, Mister Rich Swan, I have it, I have it systemized, so it I don't have to have it in my head. It's uh-huh. all on my spreadsheet. Love it. Um, so so what we do is we use I think it's about roughly about three percent for right. the the interest rate uh-huh. and about the same for the mortgage arrangement fee. So, so we've got the fee as well, the arrangement so, fee, we need to think yeah, of that, right? So okay. your mortgage arrangement fee is calculated and then that's added on to the total loan amount, uh-huh. which is normally 75% uh-huh. of the value of the purchase price, not the home report value, uh-huh. um, but the actual purchase price sure. um, is, is how the, the mortgage would be. Normally, how the mortgage would be calculated unless you're getting a commercial mortgage or using some sort of other type of commercial funding yeah. where that's a different story altogether okay. um, your cost you know your interest rate might be higher there might be other conditions involved in the funding as well uh-huh. um, just a wee point I'm going to jump in here because uh-huh. 75% of the purchase price or the home report whichever's lower and that's whichever's, whichever's lower, lower. Yeah, yeah, that's, right. that's Sorry, something you that, that yeah, someone right. could really get if ah, you get someone see. If, if you're willing to pay above the home report value which won't happen often, sure. Yeah. But it can happen if you if you're aware of how much profit can still be made, then that's another one. That if you've not done that correct bit of information gathering, that due diligence at the start, that's yeah. another it's another yeah. thing in the tail for you. Gotcha. Yeah. Right. And then when we come to refinance or sale and finish off the mortgage, do we need to consider stuff at that end as well? Is there more fees potentially? Potentially, depending on the product that you've got, you right. might have. You you probably wouldn't want to enter into this, but you might have a, an early redemption fee. Right. Um, so you you wouldn't want to be taking out a mortgage product that's going to have, um, you know, the, where you're going to be locked in for say, uh, two years. Yes. Or you pay an early redemption fee if you sell or or remortgage remortgage or, or sort of refinance earlier than that. Right. But yeah, so but that's another. So we've got to get our numbers right there as well. Well, you've got to get yeah. your numbers right, but mm-hmm. also. Um, what you need to do is have a really good mortgage broker, somebody mm-hmm. who's really um, going to understand uh, what it is that you're looking to do, that uh-huh. you're looking to do lots of property deals, yeah. um, that isn't going to be telling you to slow things down and just maybe <laughs> buy one a year. Um, <laughs> you know, you, mortgage, mortgage brokers are great and there's lots of different types of mortgage broker and, and we recommend using one who understands the property investment industry right that specific that. field yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. gotcha mm. right i want you guys to think of your mistakes right get come on hands and heart here put them on the table i'll, I'll kick off i'll be first uh, the, the one that i remember that stung me not doing the due diligence properly was i don't know how many years ago now but it was a uh, it was one i'd done with uh, paul paul mcfadden one of the directors of the company and it was many many years ago i think it was in edinburgh and like Jane, I'd sat down with all my spreadsheets and stuff. I, I love doing my numbers, doing my data. And it was long and weary. It was crunching away to and getting everything perfect. And I thought, we've got this nailed. And then once we, once the deal went through and we got the property and I'm, you know, just chuffed to bits. Oh, look at this. I'm an expert at this world. You, you, you know how this comes. You know how a pride becomes before a fall. And uh, then I get a letter through uh, from something called a factor <laughs> saying, uh, can you fill in this direct debit for your property? And it's like, what's a factor? Yeah. <laughs> factors fees. That's when I suddenly learned about <laughs> factors fees. You know, that was my beautiful, lovely mistake that I had to pick up on. But once you learn that, of course, You've then got it in your bag of tricks, haven't you? Yeah, then you know. And you learn that experience. So who wants to go next? So who wants to step one, up? Uh, so when I, I, I remember was um, <laughs> was uh, one of the first properties that we got, and it was uh, I ended up t- taking bridging out on it. Right. And but it turned out that didn't do the numbers right, and it turned out that the, the repayment was was stinging us quite a lot. Was it? Um, it was the rental wasn't the covering it. Right. And not only that, but. Um, I didn't read the small print, so there was the odd late payment, and there was more oh. fees added on. No. And uh, so, long story short, with that, I think at the end of it, once we moved it on, um, yeah, we were down a good few thousand. Um, What's it? Just made a, uh, it was a. Looking back now, I'm glad it happened because um, you know you learn from these things. Mm-hmm. But, but then, at the time, um, yeah, at the time, uh, I was like, how dare they take extra fees? <laughs> 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 I don't know, but. But, uh, but why yeah. they're not just giving me money? Yeah, <laughs> but, you know what? Of of um, while in the middle of that as well, I spoke. I saw about your network as well, and I get some good advice for some some good friends 
who, who have been in the game for a long, long time. Right. And they advised me, you know, to look, you really probably want to move this on because right. it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep the, uh, you know, have mm. got the firm grip of yeah. the. <laughs> I think I think it's probably a really good point to to note that that buy to let was bought before we knew anything yeah. about due diligence. Is that right? Yeah. So yeah, we go, that's a so classic thing. Yeah. Let's do this. This is yeah. no problem. I've, I've watched homes under the high. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, oh, we've got a buy to let and, and we financed it in completely the wrong way. But uh-huh. we, we didn't know. Yeah. We totally. hadn't been educated. You just didn't know. And, and that's the very first thing I would say about due diligence is learn how to do it. Right. Get somebody to teach you how to assess a deal. Yeah. Right. Because we didn't, yeah, we just totally. didn't, we didn't know I what mean, we, we didn't know, and yeah, for very, the, for the money, very valuable uh, lesson. For the money that you pay to get educated, uh-huh. that, that, I mean, it saves you, um, oh, it's just, it's, yeah. it's priceless, really. Okay. I mean, for the price that you pay to actually learn the stuff, and then really, you go and implement it, and you're saving on your first deal, basically. Yeah, you know, you've got your money back, and that, that education last you for the rest of your life. Exactly, that's right, you're carrying that forward, aren't you? So, Sean, you're in a private confessional here. Nobody's listening. Yeah. Anything you want to get off your chest about some of those early mistakes. No, no, I'm perfect. Uh, <laughs> fantastic. No. Thanks for tuning into the show. <laughs> um, I think mine's was was in doing the due diligence on the refurb of the property. Ah, right, okay. Um, but also with that, I'm, I'm going to step away from the property side of stuff because we've, uh-huh. we've touched on having the experts there and, and having your power team as well and the people you want a good mortgage broker and a good builder etc it's important to do your due diligence on them as well mm-hmm. ah and that, okay. that was my mistake so really? I, I went in with a, with a builder an actual builder um, and had got the price for the job uh-huh. and, and then it kept on growing arms and legs and there was new ah. things getting brought up and that was that was me not doing my correct due diligence on the work that was required at the start right and also not doing it on the builder the actual person you know, First time using him, but I brought him in. It was, it was my first property. I brought him in, and, right. and he basically done the full thing. But I've now, you know, had switched builders, and now what's happening is we're finding other problems that that are still arising ah. from other properties that this oh, first guy was in. Really? You know, so, and it's it's that kind of <laughs> it's good to get out of the way. Yeah. You know, you, you can't. You'll never be flawless in this game. You're, sure. you're always going to have something, but it's important just to try and mitigate that risk as much as you can. Brilliant, brilliant. I like that. Anything else you guys want to touch on? I've tried to kind of tease away at different things. Yeah. Is there anything you think we've not covered? We could give the listeners a wee tip. Make sure you do such and such. Have we captured it all? I think one of the one of the things I would say, and I don't know if it comes uh-huh. under due diligence, but just from what you you were talking about there, it's probably about doing due diligence on tenants because that's ah. been probably my biggest mistake and biggest learning, um, or one of them anyway. Really? Was um, trying to cut corners trying to keep the cost down and thinking, <laughs> I can manage these tenants myself. Oh. Um, which I would absolutely say to anyone who's thinking about new, getting into property, use the right expert for the job, just Get like you agent. spoke about. Yeah. Get the agent. Right, um, even if it's your first property. Even if even it's the if very first one you think, I can do this. No, tell them, no, get the agent, get the expert. Well, you know, that's what I thought. Aye. And yeah. I learned the hard way <laughs> and the expensive way because I had to do a lot of repairs. Right. Um, and I actually had my fingers burned twice. You'd think I'd learn the first time. Oh, <laughs> no. um, but again, with having really good education and being involved in, in the property and, and being involved in the game now, I just I know the good, the bad and the ugly. Yeah. And uh-huh. I know who the good estate agent uh, who the good lighting agents are as well and, uh-huh. and who I would work with and who and who I wouldn't. It is all about doing due jelly due Oh there we go. There we go. Oh right. It's one of the other ones. We're doing so well. Sorry for like the side down. It is all about doing your DD. Yeah, DD, fantastic. Right, that's a great point. A great point, the tenants. And then of course the agent, you bring one of them in, we've got to consider those numbers as well, haven't we? They're going to have percentages, etc. Well that's it, but Uh you again if you build up a good relationship, then you should get a good rate as well. Uh Uh-huh. And just actually one might be final thing, Sean, maybe bring you in on this. When I'm doing my numbers, am I doing them for one result because you know Jane just mentioned they're keeping the property and you know you're dealing with a tenant so it's a buy to let maybe that's what I'm doing should I just do my numbers on that or do I need to think about another exit strategies I think you should always try and have two 
Right. Okay. Just as a, as a backup. Now that doesn't mean if you if you can't get it to work as two, then you don't take the deal. Cause right. I've took deals that only work for one exit strategy. If I'm convinced it's going to work for that exit strategy. Okay. Um. But for me, normally it's going to be: does it work as a as a normal buy to flip, or mm-hmm. is it going to be a buy to let where I'm renting it out and I'm holding the property long term? Right. Because if you know if you know what they are up front, mm-hmm. it's important to know what they are up front. Sorry, because if you know that, then you can tailor your costs accordingly. Right, so for example, gotcha. if I'm going to be doing a buy to flip, mm-hmm. I want to I want to spend more money in my renovation work and my refurb than I do if it's a buy to let. Of course. I don't need yep. to spend anywhere near as much, so that can have an impact on. All right, so this deal won't work as a buy to flip, but I'm building a portfolio. And for the, I can save an extra two or three thousand pounds here, and it works as a buy to let. Mm-hmm. Having said that, a uh, a thing that I would say to make sure you don't do is don't switch your exit strategy halfway through. Ah, so right. people have, have bought a deal and, and went in it as a, this is a buy to let. Uh-huh. We're going to do a, a pretty just a standard buy to let refurb, but then towards the end they decided no, I want to try and sell it. Right, they're never going to get the proper value you would get for a, a walk-in condition property because uh-huh. it's, it's not the standard's not high enough right gotcha okay and that's because they've switched strategies yeah. halfway through yeah. excellent that's, that's a great point that's a brilliant point to end on as well and uh, with all of those gold nuggets I would like to thank our guests on the show today and when I say their names they're going to say the title of the show so we can test them so first up Jane Bucking thank you and you've been talking about today this week in property d- d- speaking about the due diligence due fantastic <laughs> Sean McIntyre due diligence fantastic <laughs> Alex Summers uh, homework <laughs> <laughs> that's good enough for me brilliant now if you would like to connect with any of those guests then all you have to do is go to thisweekinproperty.com and check out the show notes for the episode you can find all the contact details to connect with them and also any of the links and resources we might have mentioned in the show Two other links to jot down is algpropertynetwork.com if you're looking for high-level networking events in your area. And also, if you're starting your property journey or want to take it further, go to algpropertyacademy.com and check out all the resources there. So from me, your host, Richard Swan, thank you all for tuning in today and we'll see you in the next show. You're listening to This Week in Property. Stay current, relevant and up to date in the world of property investment. Learn from the UK's leading property professionals and grow your property business.